It's almost pay-per-view worthy. Disney versus DeSantis. It is the battle dividing Florida along party lines. But across the country, CEOs in all industries are eyeing the daily developments here, wondering how it might impact their company, how they should navigate these choppy political waters. Bill George is the former chairman and CEO of Medtronic, now a professor at the Harvard Business School. He joins us now. Good to see you, Bill. Uh, let's go Thank back, you. if we can, to the start of this mess. Disney CEO Bob Chapek wanted to stay out of the controversy over Disney's so-called don't say gay legislation, but the combination of angry employees and former CEO Bob Iger coming out against the law, he really had no choice. He offered this relatively mild statement. How do you think he handled it? Well, he should, should have thought about all these things first, I believe. I don't think he did his homework. Uh, he, we're in a different world today. He was acting like he was back in the 1990s. In this world of 2022, you have all kinds of uh, stakeholders who expect you to take a position, especially your employees. Employees have found their voice. And particularly in this post-COVID world, uh, they want to be respected, whether it's a Minneapolis CEO when George Floyd was murdered or people on the LGBTQ plus uh, side that want to be uh, respected and heard from. They want their CEOs to speak on their behalf. And when they don't do that, as Bob Shapik didn't, they get very upset and it leads to the kind of uproar we've had. And then they get to the worst case, which is a critical political crossfire uh, with the politicians. And that's the last thing any company wants to get into. And Disney is right in the thick of it. And it's struggling to get out of that this mess, as you called it. Even after the statement, he had the employee walkout. So what could Bob have done to keep him, his employees happy and somehow stay out of the crosshairs of the governor? He should have gone back months before, talked to his board, talked to his leadership team. What do we stand for? Disney has always been very pro-family, but also very uh, gay friendly, if you will. And they should have made those points uh, very clearly. And when this legislation started in Florida, they should have had a position ready to go. And uh, they didn't have to lead with their chin, but they should have had a position that was true to their mission and values of what Disney is, that accepts everyone for who they are. So as I mentioned, CEOs across the country are shaking a bit in their boots. What are you hearing from them and what's your advice? Well, they're very concerned. They don't want to get caught into these, this crossfire either, but they are all going back now, I think, and really thinking about uh, what do I stand for? What issues should I get involved in? And when shouldn't I get involved in? Uh, and how do I avoid getting in the crosshairs of some politician? They may get caught anyway, but if they're true to their mission and values, this is a question of should I get out of uh, Russia because of the Ukraine war? Uh, these things are coming up every way right now. And CEOs today need to know how to lead through a crisis because we go from one crisis and we go to, from COVID to George Floyd to Russia and Ukraine. And there'll probably be another one just around the corner. So they need to be prepared to deal with these and have a position that's true to their company. For instance, uh, Johnson & Johnson uh, has taken a very clear position that we're there to help people. And so if that means we're going to stay in Russia, we, don't, we have life-saving drugs. We don't want to get out. Hey, I respect that position. It goes to their credo. That's what each CEO should do, to go true back to their mission and values. A fascinating poll came out last week showing the majority of the country is against the government, punishing business over their political beliefs. But the, the fascinating part within this is Democrats were far more supportive of business than were Republicans. What do you make of that political dynamic we have today? I'm smiling because when I was a boy growing up, uh, the Republicans were seen as the party of big business and Democrats were seen as the party of the working class, the blue collar workers. And things seem to have flipped and uh, we're much more into cultural wars. Businesses are, are not interested in that. They're interested in helping their customers uh, make a difference in their lives, whether Disney is bringing fun to people or uh, organization in the apparel business bringing joy to them or Medtronic. Uh, providing good health care to help save lives. That's what they want to do. But they need to represent all their employees and all their stakeholders. And I think that's what they've lost sight of here. What's fascinating is I read this statement, and I want you to guess what party it comes from. <laughs> a senator. It's very simple. We need to see a majority of American corporations as American. They don't act in the best interest of the country. They act in the best interest of shareholders 
period. Was that a Republican or a Democrat? <laughs> I have no idea. I probably would have normally would have guessed if a Democrat today, maybe a Republican. But I'll tell you this. Uh, it's not just the shareholders today. It's not just the world it was in the 80s and 90s, the shareholder primacy. It's a, a world of stakeholders. They mm -hmm. have to operate in the best interest of their customers. They have to operate in the best interest of their employees. And they need to find an alignment with those interests, with their shareholders' interests. And that they have to do all of it. Th that statement continued, we are, as policymakers, we need to be acting in the best interest of the country, not big business. Sound like Elizabeth Warren. It was Marco no. Rubio. Stunning yeah. when I got, got to the finish of it. How do you think yeah. this plays out for Disney? Their special exemption wouldn't actually go into effect until June 2023. Can they wait out the governor? Yes, uh, they, they may have to. Uh, there's this billion dollar question about who's paying off the bonds, which legally have to be paid off. And that's not clear. Uh, I'm not sure Orange County has the money to do that, the Orlando County. And so they are going to have a continued battle. But understand, the governor has different objectives than Disney. And so uh, Disney can't meet all of his needs because he is working a whole political angle here. And that's why I say they don't want to get caught up in that. But they have to run a great Disney world, I can tell you that, that welcomes everyone to their premises. And that's the most important thing for them. And they have to make sure this doesn't turn against them. Mm -hmm. And they probably have some legal recourse on this whole uh, latest legislation that had to do with pulling back that special district. And there are many unintended consequences, frankly, that have not been thought through there that will give Disney more ammunition. A good example is Ed Bash in a Delta a few years ago, the Georgia legislature withdrew a $41 billion, a million dollar uh, tax uh, break that they got on a fuel savings. They've been giving it for 30, 40 years. And uh, he stood up and he said, Disney's values are not for sale. A year later, the legislature restored that and uh, retroactively. So in the end, Disney didn't really, or uh, Delta didn't really get hurt by that. So I, I, I'm optimistic that Florida needs Disney World. I can tell you that it's yeah. a huge revenue producer. I was just in Orlando, uh, actually for a soccer game, not for Disney World. But I can tell you, it's, it's created everything around there. They need that and all the merchants, all the hotel owners and all the restaurants desperately need Disney World. They, they, yeah. Florida can't do without Disney World. So it's a question, who needs whom more? 70,000 plus jobs as well. Uh, Bill George, exactly. Harvard professor, former chairman and CEO of Medtronic. It is tricky times to beat a CEO. Thank you, Bill.